for this assignment, you are going to be creating abstract sculptures from basic supplies like wood and wire and nylon. So if it's an abstract sculpture, it's not meant to look like anything in particular. You're going to see a lot of wavy, curved edges to your sculpture. And then you will be painting your sculpture in an abstract style that you choose that, again, isn't necessarily looking like anything recognizable, but it's just lines, shapes, colors, patterns. Um, this is just one example of how you could go about finishing this project. We are going to be working with a couple of tools that could um, hurt you or somebody else if you don't use them appropriately. So first of all, we have to protect our eyes during the sculpting part of this project. So if you wear eyeglasses naturally, fine, you don't have to do anything else. But for those of you who don't wear eyeglasses typically, you're going to be putting on a pair of safety glasses anytime we're using wire to sculpt with because you don't want to poke yourself in the eye on accident with the wire. Um, so, what we're also going to be using is a pair of pliers. Pliers have um, a blade that's close to the center of the tool that does the cutting of the wire, but then you can also use the top end of the pliers to kind of twist and bend things. So I can use the top part to twist and bend and then I can use the blade part to actually cut the wire. Um, with the pliers, please do not be digging into the desk. Please do not use them to cut or twist anything besides the wire for this project. And then we're also working with um, coat hangers for the wire of our project. Please don't be poking each other on purpose with the coat hangers. Uh, you can work standing up if that's easier than sitting down, but your materials stay on your desk at all times. You should not be walking around the room with your wire or your pliers. Um, if you happen to need to leave your desk for a reason, set those on the desk and then go do what you need to do. Come back to your desk so the supplies stay on your desk at all times during class. Another supply that we're working with is nylon. So to create the sculpture, you're going to be um, shaping it with wire, and then the wire is going to go into a wooden block, um, and then you're going to stretch the surface with nylon. That's what makes it three-dimensional to be able to then paint the surface. So nylon. Um, it goes on like a sock. These are brand new. These have never been worn by anybody. They are fresh out of an unopened box. Um, so with the nylon, this only goes on your sculpture project. I do not want to see you taking the nylon and pulling it over your head and face. That's not how we use the nylon. Um, but you might need to kind of roll that nylon down in your hands so that you can get to the base or the foot of that nylon to stretch it over your wire sculpture. Um, but don't get distracted by just wearing the nylon like a big fancy glove and just making puppets with your nylon. I've seen this done before. Let's be focused and intentional um, with this assignment. So uh, you need to use the pliers, the goggles, the nylon, the wire, uh, in a safe way like I'm demonstrating you to use them. Uh, if you cannot use these supplies safely and correctly, then you'll be doing an alternate assignment, um, but hopefully we're not in that situation, so please just follow directions. start with, um, you are going to be using wire to just shape the form of that sculpture. Uh, so what you're going to need to do is put on your safety goggles because the wire is sharp and when you cut the wire, a piece might snap away and you just really want to protect your eyes. If you already wear eyeglasses, then that's totally fine, but those students without eyeglasses, you need to put on your safety glasses. So this tool is called a set of pliers. Um, the very edge or the deep inside part of the plier is the blade. That's what you're going to be using to cut the wire itself. So we're going to start with a coat hanger to get our wire from. So if you notice, the coat hanger kind of has this straight angle right here near the hook. We're going to be cutting where that straight angle starts to curve down into like the pointier part of the hanger. So I'm going to use my dominant hand, so for me I'm right handed, and I want to use the sharp edge of the blade to cut through this wire. So you always want to securely hold it with your opposite hand 
And then you want to make sure that the wire is going um, in between the blade section. And you kind of want to um, be very strong with how you hold the wire in one hand and squeeze the pliers in the other. You are not going to be able to squeeze the pliers and cut through like scissors would cut through paper. But instead, it's a process where you need to squeeze hard with your pliers and pull with the opposite hand and kind of wiggle back and forth, back and forth. So you can see I'm twisting both hands while I'm squeezing and eventually it's going to snap. So um, don't expect to do this right away. It takes a little bit of wiggling and then it's going to snap. So now I just separated these pieces of wire. Um, you'll feel that the wire gets a little bit warm and that's caused from the friction of you kind of moving your wrist back and forth. So it's going to get a little bit hot, but it's not going to be so hot that it burns you. You'll also notice that um, the edge might be a little jaggedy. So all I do is I just close my pliers and just kind of tap that surface. And what that does is that's going to bend down any of the sharp little small pieces to make it so it's not going to scratch you hopefully. Okay, now I need to cut away this other edge of the hanger. So I'm going to repeat that process. I'm going to open my pliers, stick the wire down in between the blade section with my opposite hand. I'm going to hold down firmly and now I'm squeezing hard and I'm twisting my wrist. Both wrists are moving back and forth so that I can eventually snap through my wire. So be patient. It might take you 10 or more times. It's eventually going to cut. If you're really struggling with this, you can always ask a friend to help. You can ask me or other students in class who are able to figure that process out more easily and quickly. They might be able to help you. Okay, so this is my fresh edge. I'm going to close my pliers and just kind of tap that edge. It's going to bend away any of the sharper pointy spots. Okay, now I'm ready to start to shape this wire. So I want to envision the form of my sculpture and it's just kind of meant to have a lot of movement to it where the lines are just really kind of twisting and turning. So the base of our sculpture is a wooden block that I've already cut for you and there's four holes that have been drilled into the block. Doesn't matter what holes you choose to work with, but if you're using one piece of wire, you need uh, to place it into at least two holes. So, you can start out by sticking it into the wooden base, and then um, you want your structure to kind of lift up and be taller. So, now I know I need to start to bend my wire. I could do this just with two hands and start to shape my wire, or you might use the top edge of the pliers to start to grasp onto the wire and bend it as well. Okay. So now you can see when you stick it in your wood block, now that wire is starting to stand up tall, but I have to connect the second end back into my wooden block. So I need to bend it back down the opposite way. I know this is not going to reach the block yet, so I could keep bending or I might straighten this out and now bend down. So now it does reach in that block. But this is a very boring structure to look at because it's just one bend in the wire. So you can be a whole lot more creative than that. This was done with one piece of wire and you can see how it twists and turns and has a lot more movement. All of these examples were done with one piece of wire, just bending it and getting a little more movement from the wire. So I could do that while it's in the block or I could take it out of the block and continue to twist it and bend it. So um, maybe I leave it in the block for now and just start to add some more angle where I could squeeze the wire in. That's okay if it comes out of the block as you're shaping it. You might twist the wire. So now it's going to start to curve the other way. This is really just an experiment to see what it is you shape. Figure out um, what holes in the block you want to work with. Is it two side by side that's better or is it two opposite? And then maybe I bend it and fold it 
and just kind of play around with the shape of this. So that's the starting point for this project, which is just to shape the, um, the edge of the structure. But in order to see this as a three-dimensional form and what it's going to look like when you have the nylon over the top, you're going to need to place the nylon over your wire to envision how this is going to become three-dimensional. The nylon is what's going to go over the top of the surface. What I like to do is kind of fold down the top edge similar to how I might put on a sock so that my thumbs are all the way into the bottom of that nylon and now I'm going to stretch that over the top of my wire. So. The nylon is flexible and so is the wire and you'll be able to bend that and pull this nylon all the way over the wire surface. You want to get the seam of the nylon kind of in line with your wire frame so it kind of hides or disguises that seam. And then I'm just going to stretch the nylon over the rest of my wire sculpture. And then the extras, I'm going to pick up the block and I'm going to stretch the nylon around the surface of the block. And then all the extra is going to go on the bottom of the block. So you can see how when I pull it tighter, I get this kind of curvature in the nylon. I pull it tighter on the other side so I get this curve out into the edge of the block. Okay, then I'm going to set that down and I'm going to look at my sculpture and I want to look at it from all sides. And this is how you determine if you're happy with the form. If you don't like it with the nylon, continue to twist and shape your wire until it looks like what you want it to. So you could leave the nylon on and you could just kind of continue to bend that wire. Sculpture should look visually interesting from all angles. So what's it look like from the front, the back, turn it, spin it, rotate it. Um, maybe I want this whole thing to twist a little more. Maybe this is going to bend more and bend more. Okay, separate the wire and pull that out a little. Bend this back. So maybe this is starting to become the structure of my nylon. So one wire is an option. However, you might experiment with creating a sculpture from two wires and you could do this a couple different ways. So you could take that nylon off and save this because you really should only need one nylon for this assignment if you're just using one wire. So I can pull this back off and try another design. Okay, so I'm going to set that nylon to the side, but now I might experiment what does this become if I add a second wire to it because I have two more holes in my block that I could use. So I can get another hanger. Again, you need to have your safety goggles on if you do not wear eyeglasses and then you're looking for the blade part of the pliers hold with both hands, squeeze the pliers hard, and twist with your wrist until it snaps. Then I'm going to repeat that on the other side. And it might be easier to do this standing up instead of sitting in your seat. Okay, the extra piece, just leave that on your desk. We will collect those at the end of class. Now I'm going to kind of tap those edges with my closed pliers to bend away the sharp pointy spot. Alright, so now I'm going to repeat this process with my second wire. Um, I could put this in an empty hole here and an empty hole here. Not going to go in that hole, so I need to bend my wire. Okay, so that now might become another edge to my sculpture like this. So now test your nylon. Get that nylon back out. They're very, very stretchy. Um, so I'm going to slide this nylon 
over the top of one of those wires. And then I'm going to stretch it to go over the second wire also. So I'm going to see what does this form look like when I've got two wires involved but one nylon. So if your nylon rips um, and it's in a spot that's visible, then um, I can always give you another one, but please don't rip them on purpose and be wasteful. But sometimes they rip, but the extra, the ripped portion ends up on the bottom of the block and then that's not going to matter because you're not going to see that. Okay, but you also need to be able to get the nylon around the bottom of the block. So, this I'm going to stretch a little bit more because I have to be able to secure it under the wood block. Okay. So now I can see, and I'm going to keep kind of pulling it to get the bunches out of the nylon. All right. So now I can begin to see what this looks like with two wires and your sculpture is now going to become even a little more three-dimensional okay so now I have a little more points to work with and again I would set it on your desk and kind of turn it and look at it what's it going to look like from all angles if you are happy with um, the general design of your sculpture, then what you're going to be doing is placing these wire hanger tops in the box that I'm going to collect them in. Um, and then we'll have to sanitize and wipe off our pliers at the end of class. You are going to be keeping these sculptures um, at your seat and then you can read the directions on the board to see what you can do as an early finisher before it's time to clean up.